hello guys welcome back to my channel uh, so today i am going to discuss a topic that is ambiguous genitalia okay so uh, before indulging into this topic uh, proper let's just review the basic embryology first that how the uh, reproductive system develops okay uh, so see the karyotype of the fetus is fixed okay the karyotype gets fixed at the time of conception itself that whether the fetus will be 46 xx or the fetus will be 46 xy okay this karyotype is fixed at time of conception so uh, the reproductive system precursors include the three things genital ridge germ cells and the sex duct these germ cells actually populate this genital ridge so uh, this genital ridge can develop into ovaries or testes how because of the uh, depending on the karyotype if the fetus is 46 xy that it has the y chromosome then this y chromosome has the um, SRY gene on its short arm. This SRY gene encodes testis determining factor which is responsible for the differentiation of this genital ridge into testis. Okay, but if the fetus is XX that it doesn't have the Y chromosome. So in absence of Y chromosome there won't be any testis determining factor so the genital ridge develops into ovary. Okay. Next thing, these germ cells are within this genital ridge, ovary or testis. So, this testis determining factor actually uh, helps the germ cells to differentiate into Sertoli cells and the Leydig cells. These Sertoli cells secrete Mullerian inhibiting substances. The Mullerian ducts are uh, responsible for the development of female internal genitalia, the uterus, fallopian tubes and upper vagina. So the Sertoli cells secrete Mullerian inhibiting substance and so this inhibits the Mullerian ducts and so these structure regresses. While the Leydig cells helps in the production of testosterone from the testes, and this testosterone helps in the development of external genitalia of male phenotype okay see the external genitalia is all dependent on the presence of testosterone or absence of testosterone if the testosterone is there the female gen the external genitalia will be male type if testosterone is not there it will development it will develop into female type okay so we saw due to Y chromosome genital ridge differentiates into testis and within the testis there are leading cells and Sertoli cells which secrete the Mullerian inhibiting substances which are responsible for regression of the Mullerian ducts and testosterone which helps in the development of the external genitalia and the development of the Wolfian ducts which further differentiates into male internal genitalia okay so uh, we we learned the reproductive system precursors and how it works okay so next the types of uh, various uh, classification system of uh, ambiguous genitalia okay and this classification is actually based on the gonadal histology gonadal histology so see these are divided into four types the female pseudo hermaphrodite the male pseudo hermaphrodite true hermaphrodite and gonadal dysgenesis uh, in in cases of pseudo hermaphrodite see the female pseudo hermaphrodite means internally she is a female but the external genitalia is of male type so that's female pseudo hermaphrodite the first word female that means internally the karyotype and the internal genitalia are of female type okay so let's discuss this one by one so the way uh, the first thing female pseudo hermaphrodite as i have said already the genotype or the karyotype is female type okay 46 xx 
I already said the gonads are of female type. Internal genitalia is gonad, that is, they have ovaries. Uh, so what's the problem? Problem is in the phenotype. Why? Because the phenotype is ambiguous. From mild clitoral enlargement to complete virilization. Okay, why this happened? Uh, the phenotype is of male type. Why this happened? Because uh, what I said that the external genitalia is under the influence of androgens. If androgens are there, it will develop into male. And if they are, they are not there, the genitalia will develop into female type. So in case of this female pseudo hermaphrodite, there are androgens in the fetus which uh, makes the external genitalia to develop into male type why these are why uh, in a female uh, female fetus there are uh, androgens because of the congenital adrenal hyperplasia and the transplacental androgen exposure so because of these two factors there are androgens in the female fetus which led to development of male type of external genitalia or ambiguous external genitalia there are six types of congenital adrenal hyperplasia and the first four are virilizing so how to diagnose the female pseudo hermaphrodite see the presence of virilized external genitalia okay the genitalia will be of male type but there won't be any palpable testes and on imaging you will find the uterus and ovaries to be normal and among the laboratory findings there would be raised 17 hydroxy progesterone and the fetus will be designated as a female fetus and this is the most common cause of ambiguous genitalia in a neonate okay um, next is the male pseudo hermaphrodite again by name it is clear that internally it is the male the genotype it for is 46 xy and the internal genitalia is also testis but externally this develops into a female uh, female external genitalia uh, why uh, why this female genitalia because of the absence of androgens and why these androgens are not there in a male fetus maybe the reason is see the androgens are secreted by this uh, leading cells in a testis okay maybe these uh, testosterones are not produced or because of the androgen insensitivity syndrome where there is problem at the level of receptor uh, okay so androgen insensitivity syndrome can be a cause so how to diagnose uh, the external genitalia will be of female type so these patients present at the age of 13 14 as the as uh, for the main complaint of amenorrhea okay and when you do the ultrasound what you will find that the internal genitalia is testis only there are no ovaries and no uterus okay and it is the most diverse and difficult to diagnose group as the androgen insensitivity syndrome has problem at its receptor level so there will be normal or raised testosterone and there will be absence of this mullerian structures the uterus fallopian tube on imaging okay so uh, let's uh, next is the true hermaphrodite where the karyotype can be of xxxy xxxy mosaic the gonads are both ovarian and testicular tissue and these sometimes need to be uh, proved on histology okay there can be one-sided ovary one-sided testis or uh, uh, one side uh, over testis so these permutations and combinations and uterus is almost always present the phenotype is uh, variable that they can be female with clitoromegaly to male with hypospadias and bifid scrotum so how, what's the diagnostic feature there will be both the ovarian and testicular tissues and uterus is almost always present okay uh, next is the gonadal dysgenesis this can be of these are two types mixed and pure the pure is uh, the karyotype is variable 46 xx xy or x0 x0 is the turner syndrome where we have many external features also which uh, help in diagnosis of turner syndrome 
what is there in pure gonadal dysgenesis bilateral gonads or streak gonads okay they uh, externally they are female type there is no ambiguity in the genitalia okay just like the male pseudo hermaphrodite uh, more majority of the time the genitalia is of female type and not ambiguous similarly here also the genitalia is of female type so there is no ambiguity so these are not diagnosed at the time of birth when they present they present at the time of menarche okay when the female presents with absence or primary amenorrhea and when you scan what you see that both the gonads are actually streak gonads with underdeveloped mullerian derivatives derivatives a hypoplastic uterus okay and what's in mixed gonadal dysgenesis these are actually mosaics 45 xy or x0 uh, we have the testis plus streak gonad one side you will have testis and other side you will have the streak gonad so testis one side and streak gonad on the other side with ambiguous genitalia Uh, and externally they are variable ambiguous or female type and the sex uh, assignment is usually female okay so uh, we learn these uh, four types one by one let's uh, make it in a diagnostic approach wise okay so uh, when a neonat presents with ambiguous genitalia okay uh, let's make this table a very simpler one so when a child presents with ambiguous genitalia um you will look for testis present or not see just come at the summary ambiguous genitalia uterus ovary seen these are female pseudo hermaphrodites okay ambiguous genitalia and there is uterus plus streak gonads diagnosis is pure gonadal dysgenesis okay um ambiguous genitalia and we found testis okay ambiguous genitalia you found testis diagnosis is male pseudo hermaphrodite genitalia is ambiguous you found testis you found uterus also okay diagnosis is persistent mullerian duct syndrome genitalia is ambiguous you found testis you found uterus you found streak gonad also as a extra gonad diagnosis is mixed gonadal dysgenesis and if the extra gonad is ovary or over testis diagnosis is true hermaphrodite okay so uh, that's very clear just uh, look first of all see whether the testis is there or not if there is testis it is male if there is testis plus uterus it is persistent mullerian syndrome you have seen one extra gonad also and if that's a streak gonad diagnosis is mixed gonadal dysgenesis the extra gonad is ovary or over testis diagnosis is true hermaphrodite ambiguous genitalia no testis only uterus ovary diagnosis is female pseudo hermaphrodite and genitalia is ambiguous you found uterus plus streak gonads diagnosis is pure gonadal dysgenesis okay i hope i have made this topic easy for you mm, uh, so thank you for watching